Hello everyone, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel and here I am with my new A5 Galen Leather Journal with 400 page, uh, pages of 52 GSM to Moya River paper. And I will be setting up my ink journal, my ink and pen journal for 2024. And what I have with me is some stamps. So I have my school book alphabet lower cases I got from Stationery Pal. I have a homemade stamp from my friend Katie, uh, a stamp that I bought from Gute Gouter, and then Versafine ink. I'm going to show you how I set it up, as well as I'm going to swatch every single ink, both bottle and sample, that I currently have at the start of 2024. And then once I'm done all that, I'm going to take you through a quick flip through of this entire setup. Let's get started. So we're going to start off by opening my Galen Leather journal, and we're going to stamp pen and ink journal into that first page there. This stamp set I actually got from Stationery Pal, but you can get similar ones off of Amazon. And the ink that I'm using is actually, I'm looking this up here as I'm doing this, it is the Versafine ink. And what I find key to doing this is actually, once I stamp it, I blot it on a piece of paper and then I stamp it into my notebook. And this helps to prevent a lot of that shadow and bleed through. So there I'm stamping the table of contents title. I was really good about using the table of contents in my 2023 journal up until about August and then I'm, I stopped, not sure why. So then I'm going to go ahead and stamp bottled inks for this title page. And then on the next page, I'm going to be using the hand carved stamp carved by my lovely friend, Katie and I'm going to stamp six on a page, and this is gonna be the structure that I'm going to use for all of my bottled inks. The first bottled ink I have here is Colorverse Alpha Pisces. And I had first tried this as a sample and then discovered that Pen Chalet was, uh, what's the word, selling <laughs> these bottles and I absolutely had to have them. I really, really love this shade of green. I haven't used it as much. I haven't really used my bottled inks as much as I would like to, especially since I have all of the samples, but I really want to get better at using them. The next ink is Diamine uh, Amazing Amethyst, and what I'm using there is actually my Speedball B nib that has kind of that flat rounded food food nib and it's on the wooden Kakamori nib holder. What I'm also using is my Kakamori brass nib on my River City Pen Coat nib holder to draw out the different widths of the lines as well as the swirls. The next ink I have here is Diamine Cappadocia and it's actually a Galen leather exclusive. I first saw this on Vanessa Langton's Instagram and fell immediately in love with that green along with that shimmer. And there's a little bit of sheen here, which I think this would be really, really fun to use at Christmas. I didn't get a chance to use it at Christmas, so I hope to be inking it with a pen in January. And then I'm going to show you here just how it looks on that Wearing Gold swatch card. Look at all of that shimmer. It's just absolutely stunning. The next ink is another exclusive. This time it's Dye Mine with Cult Pens, and it is the ink Coliseum. And this one was an ink that was given to me by my Secret Santa recently. And I've seen different ink swatch samples of this. And the color that I have looks a lot more coral than most of the other swatches that I've seen. But I'm still willing to use it and still willing to try it. So this is Diamine Coliseum. The next one is Diamine Meadow, and it is in that big 80 mil bottle. This, is, this was one of the first ink bottles that I ever purchased when I first started a couple of years ago, and this was before I knew that there were even 30 mil bottles for a Diamine or even samples. So, but I still really like this ink. It's an ink that I feel that I could use every spring and summer, and it's also a reliable, easy to clean, good flowing ink. So. I don't mind having a full bottle of this in my collection. The next one is Diamine Red Dragon, another one that I purchased very early on in my fountain pen journey, but this is a very good standard red that anyone can have in their collection. I enjoy this one because again, it's safe, easy to clean, easy to use, and it has good flow even in an extra fine and a fine nib. So this is Diamine Red Dragon. 
and I actually really like being able to use this now. Next one, the next few are a few from the Shimmertastic collection. The first is Diamond Shimmertastic Caramel Sparkle. It's this really nice golden brown with gold shimmer and it's kind of sad because I haven't used this as much as I thought I would. I went crazy with Diamine Shimmer Tastic inks when I first started my fountain pen journey, and I really need to use this more because it is a beautiful color. The next one in the Shimmer Tastic line is Coco Shimmer, and I love this one for fall. It's a really, really pretty brown with gold shimmer. Fortunately, I don't think I got as much shimmer in the sample here, but it is a really pretty gold shimmer in the combination of the two. The thing is, Diamine does shimmer inks really well. I find that when I use them, they the shimmer is consistent throughout the writing sample. So I know that there's a lot of other ink brands that are doing shimmer, but Diamine does this really, really well. The next one is Diamine Shimmertastic Enchanted Ocean, and it's this beautiful teal, darker teal color with a bit of red sheen, and it's got a silver shimmer as well. Another one of the first bottles of ink I ever purchased. You'll notice here, actually, most of the bottles here are ones that I purchased within my first year. There's only going to be a couple that I purchased in the last couple, in the last year, really, and you'll see how my mindset for inks has changed from wanting to buy every bottle to let's tone it down and just use samples for now. The next one is Diamine Tyrian Purple. This one I actually purchased, I believe, in January of 2023 from Cult Pens. And when you purchase these off of Cult Pens, they're like $3 to $4. Such a great price for this amount of ink. But I really like this color. It's it's more of like a Merlot type of purple. So it's not really purple, but it's also not burgundy. It's kind of in between and I really like it. Again, Diamine inks are easy to use, easy to clean and have a really great flow. The next one is no longer a Diamine ink. It's a dominant industry. I purchased this ink after seeing it on Leanne Likes channel and I purchased this after actually getting a sample from Miss Marilyn Darling, I had to have this. And it's such a stunning color, really great base color ink, and then that beautiful rose gold shimmer. How could you not love this? The next one is actually one that was given to me by a local fountain pen enthusiast. This is Ferris Wheel Press Lady Rose and Gold. This was a special edition, I believe, from 2022, and it is no longer in production. So I feel very lucky to have some of this. Now, the thing with this ink is that without the shimmer, it's very hard to read. But the shimmer actually gives it that much more legibility in a writing sample. I haven't used this one as often, but I do really like it. The next ink then we have is Herbon Ombre de Bermany. I'm counting these smaller ink bottles as bottles versus, you know, the Diamine ink vent, which I'm counting as samples. I don't know why, but that's just how I want to classify it. But I really enjoy this golden yellow orangey color. It's really legible, easy to read, and it's bright and punchy. It's a great, great fall color, and I highly recommend this one. The next one is Herbon Coré de Tropique, and this one was given to me by I can't remember who gave this to me, but it was given to me as a full bottle. And I wasn't expecting to like this color as much as I did, but this coral color went really well in my Leonardo Memento Zero Grande 2.0 Angel Skin. And it flowed really well in that wet nib. So I feel like this would work better in wetter nibs, but again, just a beautiful shade. The next one is a new one given to me by My Secret Santa. It's Herbon Libete. And I know that there are so many people who use this as their go-to brown. So I'm excited to have this as part of my collection and to actually start using it this year. I tried a, what was the other brown that I had tried from Herbon? I can't remember now because it was a couple years ago and I already gave that bottle away. But that one just didn't do it for me. And I'm hoping that this one is just that much better. Plus I'm, I'm getting into the browns. The next one is a favorite. It is Herbon Roy Rui. Donkre. It's so hard to say that, but it means rusty anchor. So it's a dusty pink. And you guys know how much I love my dusty pinks. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now this one I really enjoy using in, I mean, I use it in a fine nib, but 
anything that I have like a fine cursive smooth italic or a slightly wetter gold nib is what I prefer this in. Her bond inks can generally run a little dry, but this one actually isn't too, too bad. I really like the color of it. The next one is her bond poussiere de lune, another gorgeous purple. Who knew I would like purple as much? I actually really didn't think I liked purple that much until I started getting into fountain pen ink. So, you know, who knew, who knew? And this one is actually one I've had for a couple of years now, and I haven't had the heart to give it away, even though I haven't used it as often. So I really, I think just this exercise of swatching all of my bottled inks is helping me review my stash and what I have. The next one is Herban Rose Tendresse, and this one was given to me by my secret Santa. It's a little bit brighter and punchier than I would normally go for in a pink, but I want to give it a try for at least a couple of months and see how I feel, and if I'm still not feeling it come February or March, I will probably give that one away. But I do like the Herban smaller ink bottles. It's like a sample without having to commit to a full bottle, if that makes sense, but I also love these glass bottles. They're so cute. The next one is Herbal Vert de Gris. I really, really like this color. It's like the darker tealy gray, which makes sense because Vert de Gris is green, green of gray. <laughs> and surprisingly for an, a Herbal ink, this one flows really well. It's not too, too dry. And I'm actually excited to use this in my vintage Pel no vintage Parker pen. I've heard that Herban inks are actually really good in vintage pens, so I'm really excited to try that. The next one is Pelican Edelstein in Golden Barrel. This one was given to me... Who, who gave this to me? This was given to me by my secret Santa last year in 2022 when Simona or Simone did the secret Santa. Somebody gave me a full bottle of this. This is fantastic for shimmer, and I've actually mixed this with... A couple of other blue inks and it turns it into this amazing golden green it's gorgeous love using this it's a fantastic fantastic ink the next one is part of a set of three that i got from amario stationery this is the pannonia amario amario antiguo now this ink is meant to be mixed with the other two that are coming up because on its own it really isn't very legible so on its own, it's not, I don't feel like it's meant to be in a pen, but if you mix it with Azul Frida or Rosa Mexicana, which you will see sh shortly, you get amazing, amazing colors. So I bought these bottles. So that one here is Azul Frida. I bought these bottles with the intentions of doing some ink mixing and some ink experimentation so you will see that in the next few months here but azul frida almost reminds me of cyan like these colors the uh, amarillo antiguo azul frida and next rosa mexicano are the colors that you would see going into a printer so you have magenta cyan and then you have the yellow i'm actually looking at my printer as i'm doing the voiceover so the last one in the pannonia amarillo mix is the rosa mexicano this one is actually a very pretty color on its own i haven't tried it on its own in a pen yet but i did do a mix of these three colors in my esterbrook sd honeycomb with a needlepoint nib, nib and it was gorgeous absolutely stunning and it created the perfect color that went with my honeycomb so I'm excited to do mixes with these three inks and seeing what happens from there the next ink we have is pilot Hiroshizuku Chiku Rin who else here felt like they had to try every single pilot Hiroshizuku ink I felt like I had to do that that I had to have every sample or at least every bottle I think at one point I had nine, eight or nine bottles. I'm down to five because I realized that these are the, no, I'm down to six because these are the ones that I really want to use. Chiku Rin is a beautiful green. I compared it to Diamine Mendo, Meadow and there is a bit of a difference between them. I will keep both of them in my collection because they're both beautiful. The next one is Pilot Hiroshizuku Inaho and this one is no longer in production. So I am hanging on to this bottle for as long as I can. It's a gorgeous rice brown. And I'm hoping I did receive a bottle of Wearing Ghoul Heart, that's that rose gold silver shimmer. I wanna combine the two and see what they look like. 
The next one in the pilot line is Pilot Orochizuku Kujuku. So this one is more of a teal color and it's got a little bit of a sheen. I really like Pilot Orochizuku inks because they are, if you're ever having trouble with a pen, put in a pilot ink. So you'll see if it's the ink that's giving you the trouble or if it's the pen. And most pens will work beautifully with a Pilot Orochizuku ink. The next one is Pilot Orochizuku Shinkai. I felt like this was one of the first inks that I got because it was the midway between having a black ink or a blue ink and I thought well why not have the best of both worlds. Again it's not one that I use very often. Actually my husband I sometimes fill his pen with Shinkai so that he can have a little bit of variety from his usual black ink but I really need to get back into using these inks because they are, they're very well behaved and they flow well. Next is Pilot Orochizuku Shin Ryoku, and I think this is a gorgeous forest green with a little bit of red sheen. I love that the sheen in the Pilot Orochizuku inks is not so overpowering that it gives me a headache. I have some, have had some sheening inks that were just so bright that I couldn't even look at it, whereas these are just the right amount of sheen. They flow so well in a pen and the color is gorgeous. Next, we have Pilot Orochizuku Sukio in the smaller bottle. I wish I had all of the inks in these smaller bottles, except for Inaho, I'd probably keep that one as the big 50 ml bottle. But Sukio is one that I actually use for a lot of my new pen testing. It's a great base ink to be able to test your pens to make sure that the nib and the feet are all working the way they should be. And it's a darker blue that's leaning more towards the teal or turquoise and it's got a little bit of sheen as well. Next we have Rohrer and Klingner Alt Gold Grun. I adore this ink and this was actually very very well priced for the amount of ink that you get. It's a lovely goldish old, it's basically old gold green and it's a bit of more of an olive green but I really like it and I use this in a lot of my fountain pen ink paintings as well. It's very well behaved and very easy to work with so I highly recommend getting Aurora and Klinger Alt Gold Grun. Next we go into the Sailor inks. The first one here is Sailor Manyo Kuzu and this one, gosh I'm just remembering, Kuzu is actually I think a flavor that is in one of the drinks at our local Tim Hortons, but it's a really beautiful kind of dark red Merlot color. And again, one that I haven't used in a while, but I haven't been willing to give up this bottle. Next we have Sailor Manyo Shirakashi. And this one came with my Sailor Pro Gear Slim Manyo Nuts. And this is actually a very interesting color. It goes down, it's like a mix of a brown green. It's more green. I'm sorry, it's more brown than green when it goes on the page, but it's still such an interesting color. And it actually matches with the body of Manyo Nuts perfectly. I do need to use this more because together with my Sailor Pro Gear Slims, it works beautifully. Next, we have Sailor Shikiori Yozakura. I bought this after trying a sample from Goulet Pens and I just love this color. Again, it's more of that dusty pink shade and I really enjoyed being able to use this. It's kind of mauve pinky, but also really well behaved in a pen. Gosh, going through all of my bottle things, I realized how much I really need to get back into using these. Next, we have Sailor Yurimeko Kitsune Biori. And this one, you never know what color it's going to be, actually. You think it's going to be this brown, but it looks more like a dusty pink. And I love this. This was the only bottle that I bought from the Yurimeko range. And I'm so glad that I did because it is such an interesting color. And actually, for flow, it's beautiful as well. So I really need to ink up a pen with this right away here. I feel like I need to ink up all of my pens with these bottled inks. Next was a 2020, no, yes, a 2023 purchase. This is Cheranishi Opera Rose, fully influenced by Leanne Likes. I love this. I know a lot of people don't see this as a dusty pink. It looks more orange than pink, but I really love the color. And also the ink is so well behaved. So of course I had to buy a full bottle, even though I said in 2023 I wouldn't buy any. <laughs> 
And then we have Troublemaker Kelp Tea. This was given to me by my Secret Santa in 2022. And I really like the color. It's a mix of this. I feel like it's a little bit of like Shirakashi and Inaho and Alt Gold Groon all together. It's that chromo shading ink. It is a little drier than most inks. But otherwise, I really like the way that this looks. And here's a quick look at all of my bottled inks that I keep in my drawer. I like to try and keep just this number of bottled inks and I try not to overflow. And then I have all of my sample inks here in this Pen Chalet sample ink vial holder, but I know I have way more than this. So then I'm gonna go ahead and start stamping out the title page for ink samples. And then on each page, I'm going to use this stamp that I got at Goot Goucher from Japan and actually put 10 of these on a page, which in an A5 size is now more than enough room for me to be able to do a swatch, a quick little writing sample, and some line widths. The first ink that we're going to swatch is Andrelium Tulip Moth Warm. It's a brown that I received from can't remember who now, but it's a brown, which I never thought I would like, but actually this works really, really well in a pen and I really enjoy its color and shading. The next ink we have is Birmingham Penco Agave. And this one was one that I got very recently. I actually this year discovered a lot of Birmingham Penco inks. I really like the different colors that they have, the chromo shading but also how well they flow in my pens. Birmingham Pen Co. is a favorite brand this year. The next we have is Birmingham Pen Co. Antique Sepia. This one was given to me by my secret Santa very recently. And this one I can't decipher whether it's a green or a gray. It reminds me of the Irameku inks that are those multi or those chromo shading inks. It's just, you never know what this one's gonna turn out to be. Then we have Birmingham Penco Armadillo. I really like this one because it reminds me a little bit of Sailor Yurameko Kitsune Biore, but then it dries to kind of a lighter pink. It's a really, really pretty color, but you don't have to have it in a wetter nib. I tried this in a finer and extra fine nib and it just still shades beautifully. So this is what I love about Birmingham Penco inks. The next ink we have here is Birmingham Pen Co. Barley. This one was given to me by Pam, and I'm so happy that she gave this to me because I've been trying to find a yellow that's not too bright but still legible, and this one is just perfect and still flows beautifully, so I recommend Barley. Next, we have Birmingham Pen Co. Basil Pesto. This one's an interesting one because this went down a little bit yellowy orange, but then dried to this really, really lovely green. So again, those chroma shading properties are really prevalent in the Birmingham Penco inks, and they still write beautifully, even with all those properties. Love them. Next, we have Birmingham Penco Cherry Blossom. This one is a little bit more saturated. I like the pink, almost leaning to magenta shade of this particular ink and I'm hoping to be able to use it in the next couple of months. I have so many Birmingham Penco inks and I'm so glad to have them all. Next, we have a custom mix from Katie. It's a Birmingham Penco mix called Evergreen that she created for me. I asked her just to create a green for me and she went hog wild and I'm so glad she made this one because I love this color. I think it would match really well with my Pilot Vanishing Point Forest Green. Absolutely gorgeous. Next, we have a Birmingham Penco Fox Squirrel, another brown ink. Who knew I would like brown inks as much as I do now? And I've used this in a pen, and I love the creaminess of this brown. And I'm hoping to use it again come the new year. But it's such a soft, creamy, that's all I can say is a creamy brown. Next, we have Birmingham Penco Fresh Water Bog. I use this Gosh, I can't remember which pen I used this in, but I really like the shade of blue. It's a little more muted, but still very punchy in blue. And it's a little darker, a little leaning more towards the gray. I really like this color. So that is Birmingham Penco Freshwater Bog. 
Next, we have Birmingham Penco Heron. I like this one because it reminds me a little bit of Pilot Eroshizuku Shizuku uh, Kujiku. And it has a little bit of that sheen as well. So you've got a little bit of that teal, a little bit of that sheen. A really great one if you want to try a teal color. Next, we have another custom mix from Katie. This one is called Iris. And this one actually reminds me of Sailor Manyo Nekoyanagi, which I no longer have in my collection. And actually, this ink matches my River City Penco nib holder perfectly. It's got hints of purple and pink in there. It's a beautiful chromo shading ink. I can't, I don't know how she did this. It's beautiful. Next, we have Birmingham Penco Milkweed. This one reminds me more of Sailor Yozakura, and it's a gorgeous kind of dusty purple. Again, a really beautiful color. I love all the different hues and different saturations and tones that Birmingham Penco gets in all of their inks, and I'm so glad to have so many samples. Next, we have Birmingham Penco Molten Tin. This one was given to me by My Secret Santa recently, and I'm hoping to use it in a pen in January. This one kind of goes down. It looks like it's gray, but then it's kind of this blurple color, and I'm a big fan. I am a big fan of this one, and I can't wait to use this in a pen. Next, we have Birmingham Penco Pennsylvania Fieldstone. This one is gorgeous. This is a dusty pink. And I really, really like this dusty pink. I've used this in a pen and it's, I'm amazed at how well these flow in an extra fine and a fine nib. I'm big fans of Birmingham Pen Co. They are a smaller company and there's a little bit slower processing time, but the inks are worthwhile. And then we have Birmingham Pen Co. Projector Film, another brown Another brown that I like, but this one leans a little bit more towards the orange in tone. Who knew that brown would have so many different complexities? I didn't. And now I'm discovering all of the lovely browns, and I am really liking them. Next, we have another mix from Katie Birmingham Penco Shimmering Coral. I don't remember what I asked her in terms of what to make, but this one I love because it's got a little bit of shimmer. I really like that bright orangey coral, but also I have yet to try this in a pen and I'm hoping to put this in a pen soon. If not January, then definitely in February. Then we have another mix of hers, Birmingham Pen Co. Toasty Firewood. This one is more of a warmer brown and she's added some shimmer to it as well. And she says to put this in a pen that is easy to clean out. So I'm waiting to find one that I can easily clean out so that I can put this ink in there. Next, we have Colorverse Mystic Mountain, which is a really pretty kind of muted sky blue with rose gold shimmer. I really like the shimmer inks from Colorverse. The only thing is the shimmer doesn't always evenly distribute when I'm writing with it, but otherwise it's a really, really pretty ink and I love that rose gold shimmer. Next, we have one from the Inkvent calendar of 2022, Diamine Bliss. This one is actually currently inked up in my Pilot Vanishing Point in the Forest Green. And I love Diamine inks, as you can tell from how many bottles I have, but also how many samples. Such a good, safe, reliable ink with beautiful colors. The next ink then we have is Diamine Ink Vent Celebration. This is more of a coral ink and it's got a little bit of shimmer in it. This one is actually currently in my Leonardo Ferrore in ginger and in that fine nib that shimmer still comes out absolutely beautifully really lovely to write with no flow issues or anything so diamine celebration next we have diamine celadon cat and this one was the reddit ink of 2023 i really like this hue of blue this kind of light blue and it just works beautifully in my pens. I'm hoping to use this again come 2024. Another one from the Inkvent calendar is Diamine Dusted Truffle. This is actually currently in my Silver Burl Strata Quartz in the Extra Fine Nib. And even in an Extra Fine Nib, the shimmer comes out spectacularly. It's all consistent. There's no hard starting. Beautiful shimmer. Really great flowing ink. We then have Diamine Earl Grey, which I think is a staple in a lot of people's ink collections. And I tried this pretty late in the game. I'm going to be using this in my Parker Slimfold Vintage Pen because it has been recommended that Diamine inks are great 
for vintage bent. So I'm looking forward to that. Then we have Dye Mine Ink Bent Jingle Berry. I was just reading the sheet. I was going to say Jingle Belly. That's not right. It's Jingle Berry, a really bright magenta pink. And I used this in, I believe, 30 inks, 30 days. And it was actually really fun ink to use. But I also used it for painting really bright, really punchy. But also when you add a little water to it, beautiful chromo shading. We then have Diamond Inkvent Memory Lane, which is currently in my Narwhal Voyage Tromso, which has a fine nib. And you get such great shimmer, even in a fine nib. This is what I like about Diamond Shimmer Inks, is that this shimmer is still consistent even in the finer nibs. Gorgeous. Then we have Diamond Inkvent Olive Swirl. I think this is my favorite out of, out of all of these ones. I really like the base olive color with that shimmer. And you can't go wrong with Diamine Shimmer inks. I'm a bit in love with these, but also just because they work well in my fine and extra fine nibs. No issues there. Then we have Diamine Ink Vent One More Sleep. I currently have this in my On A Whim Woodworks Cool Tone Primary Manipulation Pen. And another beautiful blue and actually when this dries you can kind of see a little bit of purple coming out so it looks more blurple than anything so a standard ink but still one that i think you should try then we have diamond ink vent upon a star this is one that they call a chameleon ink so you've got shimmer you've got sheen you've got a beautiful dark royal blue base and then you've got that red sheen and then that shimmer the shimmer looks like it's green or teal. It's a fantastic, fantastic ink. Very beautiful in a stub nib. Then last of the ink vent, we have Diamine Yule Log. And this one actually is my favorite. I have this currently in my Leonardo Via Latea with an extra fine nib. And even with that extra fine nib, that shimmer still manages to come out evenly in the writing sample, which really, really impresses me. Next, we have Dominant Industry, Les Nymphes, Les Nuages. I don't know what that means, but my pronunciation is awful. It's got a little bit of pink shimmer, but I don't think I got enough shimmer in my sample, but it still really is a pretty blue. I like this hue of blue and that is still legible. You're going to see that fine line between this being not legible and legible, but this one is definitely a good one. The next one then is Dominant Industry Maple. This one became a favorite of mine this year. It's very good type of orangey red without being too garish of an orange. And it flows really well even in a fine or an extra fine nib. Then we have Ferris Wheel Press Cabernet on the Lake. I bought the charger set of these and I think this one is my favorite out of the three that I got in that charger set. That burgundy bright red is really pretty and then you've got that shimmer to go with it which I absolutely loved in my Pelican M800. Then we have Ferris Wheel Press Dusk in Bloom. This is one that I tried I believe maybe a year ago and then I got this as a sample again from my Secret Santa and I forgot how much I really like this blue. Very similar to Celadon Cat but a little bit brighter and still gorgeous gorgeous ink. Then we have Ferris Wheel Press Hampton Harbor Sage. This one is a little bit of a lighter green and a little bit harder to read when it comes to a writing sample, but I used it as headers like Katie has suggested and it really, really works well as a header. So when you see me do the thick lines here, that is what makes this work. And then we have Ferris Wheel Press Majestic Maple Syrup, another really light ink, but I think would work well as headers if I'm using my Kakamori Brass Dip nib here, and also one that I think would work really well for fountain pen ink painting. But if you're not into painting, I think these two might just be a little bit too light for you, especially in an extra fine or a fine nib. Then we have Ferris Wheel Press Oyster Hour. I love this one. This almost feels like a slightly darker Majestic Maple Syrup without the shimmer, but this one is a little dry. I feel like I needed to use this in a pen that had a fine nib that was a wetter nib to make it more enjoyable to use. So Ferris Wheel Press Oyster Hour. Thank <laughs> you. 
Then we have Ferris wheel pressed Peter Moss, and I love this shade of green. I've used it in my Pelican 140, and that pen is a gusher, which showed off the beautiful shading properties of this. Do I need to buy a bottle, or maybe do I just need to get a sam another sample off of my friend Adrian? If you're listening. <laughs> Next, we have Ferris Wheel Press Queen Allium. This is a really, really light purple with gold shimmer. I love this ink. Ferris Wheel Press do their shimmer inks really well, and this is one that I really, really enjoyed using. I didn't think that this was too dry, that it was illegible. It worked really well in a fine nib of mine. Then we have Ferris Wheel Press Spruce County Post. This went with the Finer Things collection, and this is a really pretty green. It reminds me of Robert Oster's Sydney Darling Harbor, and maybe a little bit more on the drier side. I mean, like average to dry flow, but still a really pretty color that I think is great in the fall. It's just a really nice green. The last one in the Ferris Wheel Press Finer Things set is Ferris Wheel Press Steeped Umber. This is more of a warmer brown. I almost feel like it is similar to the Chipotle, a Sailor Tinterius Chipotle color from quite a few months ago. But this one, I think I really enjoyed using. This one was probably the wettest of the three in that set. Then we have Ferris Wheel Press Storied Blue. You guys are getting the hint that I really like this shade of blue. You sell it on cats very similar to this. Dusk and Bloom is very similar to this. I don't know what it is about this shade of blue, but I really, really like it. And this one actually writes very well. Then we have the last little bit of Ferris Wheel Press Twinkling Tea Party. I ended up finishing it, completing this swatch. And I love the shade of green with the rose gold shimmer. Now I need to either find a bottle or somehow replicate it with my Wearing Ghoul Heart Shimmer Additive. And I think I could certainly experiment with that in 2024 and see what I can come up with. Then we have Ink Institute Moonshine. This one was given to me by Katie and I haven't actually used this yet. She has used it when mixing her inks. So she'll start with this as, as a base possibly and add darker inks to it. So I'm looking forward to trying that next year. Then we have Jin Hao Purple. This is such a wet flowing ink that no matter how hard I tried, it was just, it felt blobby <laughs> on my nib, but it's still such a really nice purple. So I'll put it in a very fine needle point or dry nib. Then we have Le Bon Demeter, another brown ink, more of a darker brown. I really do like Le Bon inks and that's why I haven't given these up as of yet because they're great in terms of color. For example, this one, Hermes Sky Blue, but also their flow and their saturation work really, really well in fine and extra fine nibs. And Le Bon Aphrodite, I'm still on the lookout for a bottle of that. <laughs> then we have Lamy Vibrant Pink. I think I've tried maybe one other Lamy ink before and I really enjoyed this Lamy Vibrant Pink. Yes, it's got quite a sheen on it, but it actually doesn't bother me too much. And this is that bright punchy pink that I think most people would enjoy. Then we have Monteverde Birthday Cake. This was a sample given to me by Marilyn Darling and I really like the purple of this. It matches my River City Penco nib holder very well and this flows actually beautifully in my extra fine and extra fine nibs. Did I say extra fine and extra fine? I meant fine and extra fine. Then we have Pilot Orochizuku Fuyu Shogun, another kind of bluey gray ink which I've had for a while and I've never used. I've just kind of hoarded it and kept it in my collection and I really need to actually start using these inks because they do work well. I just actually need to stop hoarding them and use them. Then we have Pilot Orochizuku Murasaki Shikibu. And Murasaki in Japanese I think means purple and this particular shade of purple is really lovely. I've been tempted a few times to buy a bottle of this but I haven't even finished the sample. I think I'm still Recording it, but it's really nice purple. It goes really well in those finer nibs. Then we have Pilot Orochizuku Take Sumi. I went through a phase where I felt like I had to try and own every single Pilot Orochizuku ink. I am past that now, but I think this would be a just a good everyday black. I hope to use this in 
my Kukuno or into a pen that I will just throw in my bag and have there all the time. Then we have Private Reserve Spearmint. This, I don't feel like this green really represents spearmint. I feel like spearmint is more of a teal, but I guess if you think about gum, this is the color of that. So this is Private Reserve Spearmint, really bright. Then we have the start of Robert Oster inks. We have Australis Hydra, which I've had in my collection for a while, but never actually used. I'm not sure why. This is a really nice blue with a little bit of that red sheen, and I haven't used it yet, and I need to. <laughs> I either need to use it or I need to give it away. I just, I, I need to pare these down. Then we have Robert Oster and Pulp Addiction. This is called Blue Addiction, and this was a sample given to me by Jane of, uh, oh gosh, the joint, no, gosh, JP Pen and Ink, and it was so nice of her to give me these Australian exclusives, and I'm excited to use them in a pen come January. Then another one is Robert Oster Dusky Pink. You know how I love the dusty pink or the dusky pink. And I think I did use this quite a few months ago and I still have a little bit of this sample left and I'm not willing to let it go just yet. I really want to be able to either use these up or get to the point where I've given them away and I, I, I need to get into a different mindset with these. Next, we have Robert Oster Desk Bandit The Great Owl. This is a beautiful purple and I'm hoping to use this again in January. This one felt really wet coming off of the Kakimori Brass Dip pen, but I'm hoping maybe putting it into a drier pen will work out beautifully. Then we have Robert Oster Melbourne Pen Show 2022 Melbourne Rose. Another very pretty ink. It looks very similar to Dusky Pink right above it, but I feel it leans a little more to a darker, almost kind of the red in terms of the pinks. This one also felt really wet coming off of the Kakimori Brass Nib, so hoping that a drier pen will help balance that out. Then we have Robert Oster Sydney Darling Harbor. This is the first of two samples that I have of this. I really, really like this shade of green, almost leaning to that teal turquoise. But this one also felt really wet coming off of the nib. I'm not sure what was going on here. Maybe just all the Robert Oster inks were very, very wet. Then we have Roar and Klingner Deep Pine. This one was given to me by my secret Santa. And I really, again, I like this shade of green, the darker green that has a little bit more complexity. And I'm looking forward to be able to use this. When I get samples from friends, I hope to be able to use it or just swatching it is enough for me. Next we have Sailor Shikiori Harahara. I've had this for a little while now. I've used it in a pen and really, really enjoyed it. And I haven't been willing to let it go. Part of me thinks that I will use it in another pen or another part of me keeps it because I'm not done exploring this ink yet, which is why some samples I keep longer even if I've already used it in a pen. The next we have Sailor Tintarias Agave. This is another one that I really like this kind of gray blue shade and this one is already one I've used in a pen but I've enjoyed this so much that I'm keeping this sample because I feel like I want to explore it more. Then we have Tatcha Inks. We have Tatcha Ubu Isu Olive Green. This one was recommended by a few of my viewers when I did the green ink exploration and I'm so glad that I purchased this one. This one I feel reminds me of Roar and Klingner Old Gold Grune, but a little bit more yellow in terms of its tone and it flows really well. Then we have Tatcha Ume Murasaki. This one felt really wet coming off of my Kakumori Brass Nib. But this kind of felt in the same line as Taranishi Opera Rose. But when I compared them, this definitely was more brown pink, whereas Taranishi Opera Rose was definitely more coral pink. Then we have Taranishi Innocent Mauve. This one was purchased from St. Louis Art Supply. It was a very small one milliliter sample, so I'm very weary of using it but it is a really nice purple. Just all the Taranishi inks that I've, well, I've only tried two, but the two that I've tried work really well in my fine and extra fine nibs and the color is just gorgeous. Then another one from Jane, 
she sent me a Van Diemen's and Pulp Addiction exclusive called Allspice. And this one reminds me of either Chipotle or the Corn Tortillas Sailor Tinterias exclusive. And I think this one would be great for the fall season. It's a very kind of golden brown Chipotle tortillas color. Then we have Van Diemen's May. I don't believe this ink is in production anywhere else at the moment. This one was sent to me by uh, Shazia at Bless Kit Canada. And this has a gorgeous purple base. And then you've got that green sheen and some gold shimmer. I really like sheen and shimmer together. It helps me deal with the sheen, which I normally can't do. Then we have Vinta Bini Bini or Pink Rose. Vinta is a Filipino ink company, so I'm always happy to be able to support Filipinos. And this one actually is a really pretty pink. I've used this in a pen. It wasn't too dry. I've had other Vinta inks that were very dry, and this one actually was not. Then we have Vinta Peregrino or Pilgrim's Blue. I like this blue so much, and it's got a little bit of red sheen around the edges. And I like that. I can appreciate that sheen, but if the sheen is just too much and too overpowering, then I just can't appreciate the ink, unfortunately. But this one is perfect. Then we have all the Wearing Ghoul inks. We have a Wearing Ghoul Jane Eyre. This one is a lighter kind of mauve purple. And this one I've already used in a pen, but I'm just not willing to let go of the sample. I still want to keep this. I want to explore it more or use it in a fountain pen ink painting. Then we have Wearing Ghoul Alice in Wonderland. You can tell I really like that shade of blue again, but this one has a little bit of gold shimmer. One that I've already used in a pen that I think I used for 30 inks, 30 days, and I'm keeping the sample because I do want to use it in a pen for more than just that one day. Then we have Wearing Ghoul Stone Cutters Song. They do these really, really well. And this one is another brown that I can really, really appreciate. It's a lighter brown, but still very legible, beautiful shading properties, and actually worked really well in a fine and extra fine nib. Then we have Wearing Ghoul The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. A little bit on the lighter side, but still very legible. Some of the Wearing Ghoul inks that I've tried this year were just way too light and I could not do more than just swatch with them. But this one actually, a lighter side of green, but still legible even in the finer nibs, which is very, very important to me. Then we have Wearing Ghoul The Secret Garden, a little bit of a lighter green, not a green that I normally go for, but what I loved is the shimmer in this green. It was beautiful in my Pelican 140, and I did use it for 30 inks, 30 days, and I do want to be able to use it again, which is why I've kept it. I am excited to put this into another really wet pen. Then we have Wearing Ghoul White Rabbit, which is one that I've been I had been meaning to try for a long time. When I finally got it, I found that it is very light. It has to go into a very wet pen in order to be legible. So I will give it a try again in 2024. Then my duplicate ink, we have the second uh, vial of Sydney Darling Harbor that I'm just going to swatch here just to keep track of what I have. So here's a quick flip through of my setup. I haven't put anything in these front pages yet because this is where stickers from the year will go. And then we have the introduction page, the table of contents, which I haven't filled out yet, but I will do after. And then I've got a few empty pages here to allow me to fill that up as the year goes. And then we have the bottled ink section, which it's so satisfying listening to that. I did skip two pages in between because there is some risk of bleed through. I haven't decided yet whether I'm just going to leave them like that or if I'm going to glue them together. But so far, it's just so satisfying to be able to look through all of these. And on this last page here, I have the DF Tremendous Document Black. I keep it here because it's not one that I really use regularly. It's actually a bottle for my husband. And then I've listed that I have 37 ink bottles. And then we have the ink samples page where again, so satisfying to look at all of these. Once again, there is a page skipped there to prevent bleed through. And I really like 
the way that this turned out. And in total, I have 76 ink samples with one of them being a duplicate. And then in the next section, I list all the fountain pens that I'm starting the year off with. So just a quick flip through. Actually, I won't even flip through all of that, but it takes a few pages. And then we'll get to the very end. Come on. <laughs> and then from this page, this is where we'll start. So I've taken maybe about a quarter of the book already to just take stock of what I currently have in my collection. And then the rest of this notebook will be for whatever I accumulate in the future. I also wanted to make note that I also have a, I guess one of the things that I was doing before when I also started my collection was keeping track of all of the ink samples and swatches on a piece of Rhodia paper. I received some of these wearing wool swatch cards from Blasket Canada and then I purchased some more from Pen Chalet as well to make swatches of all the inks that I currently own and then this is actually a business card holder from Amazon which I will link in the description below but this is a great way to keep all keep track of all the inks and I really like that the way the way this is organized alphabetically I did keep some extra space in between the different brands just to make it easier to add any in here as well and I just I love the way it looks so I have the panda I have the Cheshire cat and then towards the end I also have the ink drops so that's another place that I'm keeping ink samples another place that I am keeping track of everything is in this a5 rings well not a5 a6 rings and I'm keeping track of all the pens here but I haven't been great at documenting what inks have been in here and I need to work on that and then in here I have all of the inks listed by color family. So what you'll notice is that in my notebook, as well as in this book, they're organized alphabetically. This is the only place that they're all organized by color family. So this is the only reason that I do this is for organizing by color family, but then also keeping track of what inks are used. And this paper is Tamoy River paper as well. All right, so that is my ink journal all set up for 2023. Thank you for sticking with me as I swatched every single ink sample and ink bottle that I currently own. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and have yourselves a great day.